Uh, will any of these draft picks be starters this season? And I know you you uh, mentioned Drake, but I don't necessarily think he's going to be a guy that's going to start from from day one. I think he's going to be more of a specialist, the guy that they they you know ease into it because of how much depth they have there. Um, and it seems like the 49ers as of late are playing rookies less and less. You know, I, I obviously people point to Elijah Mitchell. But I tend to believe if Raheem Mostert didn't get injured, we probably wouldn't have seen a lot of Elijah Mitchell. We saw Lenore come in and spot duty. He got yanked. Ambry Thomas was in and out of the lineup. Obviously, a guy like Aaron Banks didn't see much playing time. Um, Jalen Moore saw some playing time, but then was in and out of the lineup as well. So it doesn't seem like the 49ers really use a lot of rookies. So seeing as this team is what it is now, how many of these uh, draft picks do you think will be starters this season? That's a very interesting question. And for me, like you you brought up Drake Jackson. You're right. I think it's hard to dictate who's going to be a starter on the defensive line. Because to me, it, it's a twofold question. When you talk about starters, normally you're talking about who goes out in the first play of the game. However, the first play of the game is sub packages. It's never the pass uh, rushing specialist packages. So guys like uh, Artie Key were never starters last year. Guys like Drake Jackson were never starters last year. So when I talk about starters, I, I usually refer to snap counts. And so will Drake Jackson be one of the higher snap counts on the defensive line alongside Eric Armstead and Nick Bosa? And yeah, it's a good question because the 49ers have a ton of depth. I expect Drake Jackson to be like an Arden Key type of snap count role last, uh, like he had last year. And so that accounts for about 40, 30 to 40 percent of the defensive snaps. I think that that's where Arden Key, or sorry, Drake Jackson will end up having. I do think that Kamoka Ture might start. Um, or to be honest, I don't know because it, it depends. Who's the best run defender on the team? Training camp will figure that out. Drake Jackson, though, has the potential to start um, and or has the potential to have a higher snap count if he progresses quicker than expected as the season goes along because he has a ton of pass rush potential. It's just he hasn't necessarily um, – ooh, that's an interesting comp. But um, he, he doesn't necessarily have the, the experience, right? In his freshman year, that was the year he most was utilized as an edge rusher, five and a half sacks, but he was dropped back in the coverage. He played a little more of a traditional linebacker role over the past couple of years, and he was just utilized poorly. So it's a, it's another adjustment to him, but Drake Jackson has already taken that first step of adjustment, bulking up. He's around 275, he said, um, and so... At that weight, I think he does have the potential to be a, a full-time edge, which I want him to be for the 49ers. And so I think he does have some potential in terms of snap count, but starter, that's a little questionable um, because you just don't know who's going to start on a daily basis or on a regular basis for the 49ers uh, due to packaging. Uh, but running back Tyrone Davis-Price, I think, has the highest chance of any rookie to start. And that's that's interesting to say because a lot of people deem him as the worst pick. And here's why. He said it himself. He's going to be a compliment to Elijah Mitchell, that one-two punch. But Tyrone Davis-Price also provides something different. Elijah Mitchell, you'll probably use more of that outside zone scheme type of run, probably limit his carries a little more than last year where he was up to 25 carries in certain games, um, up in the 20s. And obviously that caused uh, ca that was cause for concern because he was getting injured. Tyrone Davis-Price, though, the reason that I think that he could start a couple of games is because he's got the explosiveness that you want at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the game, what do you want to do? You want to run in between the tackles and have a physical presence, set the tone immediately, and Tyree Davis Price can do that at the running back position. I think that that's really important. And so I do think that he has a, uh, the highest potential, although really, in my opinion, I don't know really um, about many of these guys. But the guys that I want to point out is the offensive linemen. I think that Nick Zakelich or Nick Zakedge, however you say his name, has the potential to compete at center to start um, in 2022. Additionally, I think Donovan West and Jason Poe should be in that same battle as well to start for center should Alex Mack retire. I think that that will be the most interesting rookie battle in a way because I think those three guys could compete with Daniel Brunskill to start at center. Right guard might be an open competition as well if the 49ers don't deem Jalen uh, Moore um, as a good starter for that pick. But yeah, it, it is interesting, right? Because now it's kind of depth pieces for this uh, for the for the picks that the 49ers made. But those are my guys, and obviously Samuel Womack could uh, compete. I don't expect him to win the job, but that's another competition. But like the names that I named, those are mainly the guys. And oh, sorry, 
can't forget one guy. My bad, Sunil. But I can't forget one guy, and that is uh, Tariq Castro-Fields. I'll point out – I'll just say one thing. Just throw it out there because I've been saying it a bit. I think he could potentially convert to safety. He's not the best tackler, but I he his his less lack of fluidity might be best addressed at safety where he can utilize the size length and the traits that he has. And I think that that's important um, as a safety. He has to improve as a tackler. So let's see if they use him strictly as a coverage safety. But I think that that could be an interesting uh, option as well. Yeah, and the 49ers are uh, notorious for picking a player and then moving at him out of their – uh, natural position that they that. played that off your so. I mean, it's true, but that was, that was a funny kind <laughs> of thing about that, yeah. Um, I personally don't think any of these guys ends up being a starter. I think you're right. Davis Price has the uh, highest chance, but that's just, I think, going to be due to injuries. Um, I really think that most of these guys are, are, are depth pieces that may get some playing time here and there, but as far as just meaningful playing time, I really don't see any of these guys making a roster, and that's not because they're bad picks by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's going to be a combination of a lot of solid talent ahead of them that are veterans and just this coaching staff seemingly trusting the veteran player over the rookie, and we've just seen that as of late. I do have one question for you because you talked about the one-two punch with Elijah Mitchell and Davis Price. What does that say to you about Trey Sermon, and does he still have a role – on this team do you see moving forward so trace sermon is a it's an interesting test case right because you normally wouldn't expect shanahan to draft a running back this early in a class with so much depth at many positions which means running back would get pushed like i was looking in the sixth round and i was still questioning the tyrene davis price pick because tyler goodson was there in the sixth round there were there were guys jerome ford was there in the fifth round and i had jerome ford as a higher ranked running back than tyrene davis price in my rankings and so like there's value and obviously because he's in a Shanahan scheme, I feel like Tyrion Davis Price has the best chance for success in a way. But um I, I don't know really what Trey, Trey Sermon's role is right now because you just got your pass protector on third downs in Tyrion Davis Price. He's not a pass catching option. So if Trey Sermon can potentially develop that skate uh, that trait in the offseason, maybe that's where his role is, right? But now you have a nice one two complement. It's very similar to Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman when they split the carries evenly, 137 to 137. I think you could see a very, very similar complement uh, with these two guys, but that doesn't really leave much room for the other guys. And me personally, I do think that Jeff Wilson Jr. has eclipsed Trey Sermon on the draft chart just because he's a more reliable option. And so, yeah, I, I, I do hope the best for Trey Sermon, but I feel like this pick indicated in a way that Trey Sermon's role is going to be somewhat diminished in 2022 and that they may not, they, they may have realized that they didn't really hit on that pick. Yeah, that's tough because, I mean, clearly Trey Sermon was a stud coming out of college, Ohio State. He carried that offense on many occasions and uh, to see him just, not have the any the impact i mean we saw flashes of him last season it just seems like for whatever reason kyle shanahan hasn't bought into him um and you know picking another guy in the third round i agree i think that uh that might i i don't know if it officially is the nail in the coffin for trey sermon because this team in 2019 when they had the most success rushing, they ended up second uh, behind the Ravens and, you know, averaging around 140 yards uh, per per game. They had three, they had a three headed monster. It was Coleman, it was Mostert, and it was Brita. Right. So maybe, uh, maybe, right. but. Sorry, I meant to was, allude to like that third guy being Wilson. That's what I meant, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree. I, I think, I, I think, I, I got what you were saying, but. I don't know if that necessarily if Sermon can't be that third role. The okay. interesting the interesting thing though is usually like with the Coleman Breda Moster, you know, there was Coleman that was kind of like the the bruiser, and then you had the change of pace home run guys in Breda and, and Mostert. And it seems like all I guess now there's five running backs on yeah. the roster seem to kind of be the same type of running back. They all seem to type of be the bruiser. Um which is yeah, interesting. Right. Yeah. You don't like. I mean, Elijah Mitchell is the the most similar to the outside zone guy, but the other guys, like in terms of outside zone, I feel like he's the guy with the most speed in a way. But the other guys, yeah, I mean that those are guys where you don't necessarily see that home run speed. They're bruisers in a way. You're right. Which 
makes me think that this is and, – and then when you look at what the 49ers did as far as how many offensive linemen they ended up drafting as well as in the um, undrafted free agency, does this turn into just a power run where they're going to just – beat the opposing defensive line up to the point where in the third and fourth uh, quarters, now it's just gashing people for 10, 15, 20 yards a run because um, they're just going to be more physical than than the teams. And that was kind of what they did in 2019 where they just dominated the line of scrimmage and just beat people up in third and fourth fourth quarter. The, you just saw the defensive line the opposing defensive line huffing and puffing and these, uh, you know, Brita and, and Mostert were just gashing guys for 40, 50, 60 yards. Maybe we don't see those type of plays, but maybe it's more 10, 15, 20 yards. And maybe even, you know, uh, a guy like Trey Lance scrambling for, you know, big yardage and stuff like that. Maybe that just seems to be what they're, what they're gearing towards now. Um, they don't need as much home run hitting because, they have the arm of Trey Lance where maybe some of the bigger plays can be down throwing the ball versus in 2019 with Jimmy who, you know, couldn't throw the ball down the field like Trey Lance can. So maybe that's what they're looking at right now. Could be. Yeah, it could be. We'll see in training camp how the, how they strategize, right, and how they kind of use utilize this running back room. But, yeah, maybe they're trying to make up for their their lack of options in that way like in 2019, with the passing game element, because that's obviously going to kind of expand with Trey Lance at quarterback, at least the expectation. Right.